a bit a new experience to me to be in this kind of platforms. It's comfortable and easy for me to address a, a lack of people, but to come to Harvard and to face thinking minds is not an easy task. So it took me some time to ponder whether I actually could communicate what I believe in and what I stand for. It took me some time, so finally I had accepted. That's why I'm here. And today this video, the subject would be the global power, India's rising global power. But I can't talk about entire India because my experiences are confined, though I know all a lot about India, but my political experiences or my uh, political realm is only within the uh, state of Andhra Pradesh and the uh, state of Telangana. So I would like to say, I would like to communicate from within Andhra Pradesh and Telangana perspective. But to talk about the global power, first I would like to what we lack in our country there is amazing divisiveness in our country. We don't feel as one unit. For me, the reason why I came into politics was I could see the divisiveness, how it is hampering the progress. And all of us, we believe we belong to one sect, one class, or one region, or one religion, but we don't feel the complete Indianness. We don't feel, for example, the North Indian leadership they don't know much about South India. For example, Gandhiji traveled all over India. He knows nook and corner of India. Today, how many leaders, either from South or from North, actually know about the entire India? Today, I know more about America and more about West, what's happening in the West than what exactly happening in the Eastern part of India.
many dishes we face and constantly we feel the pride of our country and we feel so much on if we, we can show us our, our nationalism from a form of cricket, but actually no one addresses the two issues of India. And for me, the pain is all about. We really highlight the rest of India. But deep down there are so many issues. I'm talking about today about India is a global power, a rising power. We talk about the development. India is a really developing. We can show the data and status. It's say that India is a growth of this percentage and that percentage. But in reality, to whom, to which group, this development is actually reached? I don't have the kind of experience, and there are enough experts 
There are enough intelligent intellectuals out there who has a better idea about it. What I can say is that I can speak on behalf of common men because I have been there, I lived there, and I come from a lower middle class background. And finally, I became an actor and I would like to address these issues. And so that I know the pain of each one. And we talk about women empowerment. For me, there are a few key issues which I would like to bring it to your notice today. One is about the women empowerment. There is heavy budget for everyone and everything. And women empowerment in our schools, there is no personal hygiene for growing girls. And they have enough money and somehow does not reach them. That's the problem there. And today we want Women are the biggest force. We want to empower women, and first of all, you have to give them a healthy lifestyle. Even the so-called uh, social uh, welfare hostels are there, and they are heavily being neglected. And these are the issues which are burning issues. And also, the major problem in India is the women's safety. The women's safety is such a big concern. And what Gandhi says, in the middle of the day, women could really walk. That would be the right. That's, a, that's where we have achieved the freedom. But in reality, even in daytime, if someone has to go, that's quite a risky situations out there, even in my own kid and kid, what they go through. So for me, what I wanted to do is, first of all, we should have a great, very powerful law and order situation should be there. Law and order should be really controlled, have a, a great say in safeguarding women. To get one Nirmaya Act, when I say yesterday, it is passiveness which really pulls back India. To get one Nirmaya Act, because right from my childhood, I had seen, because I grew up with my sisters and aunts, I know that how they used to suffer. They never used to feel safe to go out of the roads. To get one Nirmaya Act, it took government for 60 years plus. That to has to happen in Delhi. Unless it happens in Delhi, they don't pay us. Everything cannot happen in Delhi to make them understand. They have to feel the country, they have to feel the pulse of the country, they have to feel the pulse of the people, which is missing. And recently I was talking about the, for example, the state has been divided, like we come from uh, Unified Amity Pradesh, and the state has been divided. What they did was, right from 69 to 72, both the states want to get separated. This is an example I'm saying, how the past, how the complicit attitude of our political culture. It took them, from 69 to 72, both the states wanted to get separated. They wanted to have their independent uh, state. But somehow the government, central government said, well, they made them to be together after some time. They had their own problems, different because they could never, whatever they had promised to make them together, so no one had fulfilled. So what exactly happened? Within no time, by the time I was growing, they started making even the same language. We speak the same language. We just the dialect is different. And they started and they lot of the problem is that whatever they had been promised, it was not fulfilled. Suddenly the anger was being shown on another region people, which is no fault of theirs. I don't belong to the generation. I don't, I don't know what exactly happened around 40 years back. It was not under my control. But the ground, but I'm facing the problem today. Somehow, it was quite a painful because why? We will say India has to be one. We should feel the oneness here. One way they say in India, that the constitution says we should be together, we should buy, we should, we should be as one individual entity and force. But in reality, they keep on dividing. As long as the DPC politics and World Bank politics are there, these kind of issues keep arising, and India's progress will be constantly will be getting taken back step. We go one step forward with this kind of divisive and note bank politics, constantly accept, accepting 
I'm constantly looking at people as a movement. For me, actually, I know a lot of political political leaders. They don't look at people as people. People are filled with emotions. People are filled with a lot of pain. People are filled with love. But what they look at them is that's my own back. This particular caste is my own back. The particular region is my own back. They don't see them as humans. In politics, we should get a human idea. They are filled with emotion. They are filled with love and affection. We have to address that issue. And unless we address the individual as we have to recognize as individuals, not as a whole pack. Till we do it, India is going to get affected by this kind of legacy politics, this kind of whole pack politics. And <laughs> when I after seeing this, because for me the reason why I came into politics was I don't want another generation, the future genera generations, has to suffer like me. I don't want them to suffer. I don't, today, I'm, I, mean, I'm, I live a comfortable life. I don't, there's no need for me to come. But I said, as a me, I felt like a service. I can't ignore. I'm a thinking mind. I said, I feel painful. I feel extremely like, sad looking at the light of a situation. Somehow, what best I can do, I don't have a strength and I, am not, I don't belong to any uh, huge political party, I'm not extremely rich. But I said, what best I can do within my means? Then establish the party. And we started highlighting each and every issue. Knowingly, getting into politics is like it's a battle which cannot be won and a destination which cannot be reached. I know it, and still I came into politics to serve my nation and to serve our people.
there is no one out there. There are no right playgrounds. There are no right facilities. Including when I was growing up, I never had a playground in my own school. I thought it was confined to my times and it was confined to them. But actually, you need to look at it right now. All the urban areas doesn't have a playground. And here we want to reap the advantage of demographic dividend, yet we don't even, we can't even provide a basic playground to our own children.